Hey friends, Andrea here. I'm going to be narrating this video. It's sped up at four times speed and this is going to be making some soap. This is my famous cat lady soap. <laughs> um, just kidding. Um, it's not famous. I just made it for my birthday party. Um, but I started out with a base of brambleberry white soap. Um, I think this is the like cold process soap. And all I'm doing is just chopping it up and then putting it into a little um, plastic. This is like a microwave proof container and microwaving it a little bit at a time. Follow the manufacturer instructions for your soap, but I usually just microwave it in 30 second increments until it's about fully melted and I stir it up a lot. And then I have, I'm adding some apricot seed oil and that's just to make it a little bit extra moisturizing. I also added some fragrance oil and this is the same fragrance oil that I used for my bath bombs. Um, I did some, so, some strawberry vanilla bath bombs and, and then I'm pouring them into this little, it's like an ice cube tray in the shape of cats. And then you probably saw me spraying something on the top of the ice cube tray and that's just rubbing alcohol and it prevents bubbles from being in your soap. Um, so that's nice. So I was just kind of checking to see how many, how many kitties can I fit into one of my soap molds. Because what I'm going to do is um, I want to make these little white kitties out of vanilla soap. Uh, vanilla white soap and embed them inside of a pink strawberry soap so that it ends up being vanilla strawberry. So that was just me making all of the little embed kitties and pouring them into the mold and seeing how many I needed to complete the soaps that I made. And I ended up making about 12 soaps so I had to do it in batches because my containers just aren't big enough. So this is me making the clear pink, it's kind of like a reddish pink soap that I end up making and I'm just chopping it up and once I get it all the way chopped up into little bits I put it into my microwave safe plastic um, container and I really like those particular plastic containers for the soap making because they have like a little spout like a really extra long little spout uh, when you compare it to something like a, a, just a regular glass measuring cup. They pour really, really well and I find that that's really helpful when I'm making soaps that um, that I want to blend colors together or mix things together. So you'll see those quite often in other people's soaping videos if you follow other people who make soaps because they, they are really nice to have that, that pour spout. Um, especially if you're trying to do anything fancy, <laughs> if you're trying to get any kind of swirling. So I tried to microwave it, like I said, in 30 second increments and uh, just until it's melted. I don't really try to go too hot. Um, and then I'm stirring it with a little skewer. And the skewers are nice because they're disposable. So I can kind of uh, try to keep it somewhat sterile. I, I wouldn't say it's totally sterile because it's a home kitchen, but uh, it's fairly clean. And uh, so now I'm just adding some apricot oil to my clear soap. Uh, this is apricot kernel oil. Um, and you can buy this in like the beauty section of most of the pharmacies or Target, Walmart, places like that. Or you can get it online. So I have a certain recipe that I have created for myself for soaps that I make that I know is going to be the appropriate amount of oil to the amount of soap that I'm using and the appropriate amount of fragrance. And I always uh, use fragrance oil, not essential oils, in my soaps. And I, I don't want to ramble and rant about that, but suffice it to say, the reason I use the fragrance oil is because it is safe for skin use and essential oil hasn't been tested for those purposes um, and isn't regulated. And 
And that's all I'm going to say on that subject. Because I know a lot of people are really into essential oils. And I'm not knocking them. It's just something that I um, like to make sure I'm doing for my own skin safety. Because I have um, eczema and I have other kinds of skin conditions that I don't want to exacerbate with stuff that shouldn't be on them. So I'm just adding my colorant. And I did try to keep track of how much colorant I was adding so that if I needed to replicate the recipe, I could keep track of that. And I definitely want to replicate this recipe in the future. And what I did was I blended some of the pink and some of the red to get something that's kind of like just in between pink and red. That, that same kind of like just ripened strawberry color. So I'm just mixing it up and just continuing on until I get it to the right color. Um, and I'm always checking for temperature. You'll see that I keep checking for temperature and that's because you don't want to add the essential oils. Um, oops, I misspoke. You don't want to add the fragrance oils to your soap base, your hot soap base, until it has cooled down to a certain temperature. And I don't want to speak out of turn, but I usually wait until it's closer to 140 Fahrenheit. And that seems to be, that seems to work out pretty well for me. That might still be pretty hot for some people or might still be pretty um, high temperature in some people's opinions, but um, that works out for me. It still gives plenty of fragrance. Part of the reason you don't want to add the fragrance um, to a very hot soap is you'll lose some of that fragrance. It just kind of burns off. So I am pouring like a very small layer of that red on the bottom of all my soap molds or so my soap cavities. And what that's going to do is just kind of provide a little place. I'm going to let it dry and then it's going to provide a little place for my kitties to sit on top of when I fill the mold. So I sprayed it with some rubbing alcohol in this little misty um, mini mister spray bottle. It gives like a nice fine mist and that rubbing alcohol again, it just pops any air bubbles that are on the surface. So now my base little level is dry and I'll note that I'm just putting my little kitties in there just to get a sense of how they should fit in and ideally you'd want to um, instead of what I'm doing here which is just spraying everything down with rubbing alcohol ideally and this is the lesson I learned you'd want to pour another super light layer of your soap it's a very thin layer of your pink soap uh, before you drop the embeds in there just to have because what ended up happening for me was I had just a few air bubbles between my embeds and I, I feel like some people don't have this problem because they're not using these individual molds they're using like a loaf mold and uh, so that you might get a better experience that way if you're doing it um, in a loaf mold but this is just what I have um, so I did spray all of the cavities down with rubbing alcohol and then tried to spray down the kitties with rubbing alcohol and make sure that everything was like really well coated with the rubbing alcohol so that way I'd have good adhesion when I went to pour my second layer and cover them up with my pink soap um, but I still ended up getting some little air bubbles in between the base layer and my kitty embeds. And so this is a learning experience for me because I had never done embeds in soap before. This was my very first time. And so trial and error sometimes and maybe instead of being ambitious and deciding I'm going to make all 12 of them at once <laughs> I could have done an, a sample one to kind of try and see how the process was going to go um, but that's okay it turned out okay and since these were just gifts that I was making for my friends I wasn't selling them 
I'm, I'm fine with how they turned out. But I did run out of the pink soap, so I ended up having to make another batch of it so that I could continue on. So here I'm just kind of mixing up a new batch. I keep measuring it to see if the temperature is correct before I pour it on top of my embeds. And that's just to make sure it doesn't bleed a little bit. Um, everything I've read online says you want it to be somewhere between like 130 or 120 degrees Fahrenheit so that you don't end up melting the embedded soap. So I did my best <laughs> to try and get it to that temperature. Um, I thought I did have another little clip of the soaps and how they turned out at the end, like just finished, but I wasn't able to find it and edit it into this video. So this is kind of the final peek at how the soaps turned out um, with the little kitties in there. And I wish I could kind of zoom in on it for you, but I'll see if I can find just a photo of one of the completed soaps and pop it into the end of the video here. Um, but I will say this was my first time making an embed soap and it won't be the last. I learned a lot and I'm glad that I attempted it and the soaps turned out super cute. Um, the people that I gifted them to really, really loved them and they smelled wonderful and overall I was very happy with them. But so <laughs> you can kind of see me off screen kind of stirring and measuring to get the temperature right for my next pour uh, after the first couple ones kind of bled a little bit. But, but anyway, um, this is about where I'm going to end the video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me do this process. And if you have any questions, leave me some comments. But uh, definitely like and subscribe so that you can see more of my content. Thanks so much. Bye.